Next civilization, if you guys can, can recognize it, this is Central Mexico, Mesoamerica, Meso meaning Middle America, kind of like Middle Earth, right? But not the other one. Uh, when I started doing this research, they had only found about nine of these colossal stone heads. La Venta, Tres Zapotes, and San Jacinto. Since then, there's like dozens and dozens more have been found. The name Olmeca means uh, the, the time of time, or the people that tie the time. They were actually the first ones to start with the calendar. The calendar that you saw at the beginning, the blue one, they were the ones that kind of codified it. Again, taking the knowledge that they inherited from the people that were there before them. So that history, the awareness, was passed on to them, and then they were like, oh, we can organize this. Right? They put it together, they built cities, they built highways between cities, not like, <coughs> for carros or anything, but for people to be able to walk through the jungle. And some of these are still there. I haven't personally seen them because I have not visited this area, but they're still there. And again, they're the mother of civilizations, and they are the cardinal direction of north, and the color of corn, black. So I was like, okay, well, if my teacher said that corn represents people, where do black people come from? What was tripping me up for a little bit was north. Where, where is Africa? Is it north? If you look at a map, do we have a map in here? Partial map? I don't have, I think I have one in my presentation, so, so I'll show it. Oh, there it is. So Mexico is here. Africa is more east but definitely south, right? So I was like, okay, cool. They weren't perfect, right? They only invented the Aztec sunstone and all these other wonderful things, but they're fallible. How did the African peoples get here? They arrived by boat. Uh, there's a book, and there's been several books written by, by different people, but the one that I studied was from Ivan Van Serdema, who did a study that um, they took some pictographs that were in the Egyptian pyramids and that showed them how to build boats. So lo and behold, this person, he, he, him and his team, they built a boat and they jumped onto the Atlantic, got on the current, and they ended up in the Caribbean. A boat made out of papyrus, paper boat. You think it's a joke, but it's for real. For real. African people came to the Americas first. This happened. 3,000 years before Christ. This is five, over 5,000 years ago. Learning this in my mind went like, uh, I thought aliens brought those heads here, right? Because when I was growing up, there was just no way that we were going to accept that Africa could produce such wonder. Now I'm like, all right, it's just propaganda. I can accept it, and I hope you can accept it. Right, because it took me a long time, especially just not knowing. African, in Mexico, 5,000 years ago. You cool with that? Some of us might go through some cognitive dissonance, like, wait a minute, it's okay. You, you, you're in a safe space here, we can, we, can, we, can, we can support you. Just don't have a breakdown outside, you know, where people are going to, like, not know how to handle <laughs> Trauma. Uh, this is one of the pictures from Ivan Van Serdina's book. This is a native uh, person from the area of uh, Veracruz. And the, if you can't read the caption, I'll read it for you. It says, several colossal Olmec stone heads have been discovered. This one more than eight feet high, covered in what appears to be a helmet. <coughs> and they were saying that in, in the, not the caption, but in the actual part of the book, they were like, See, that face is from Veracruz, because this Veracruzian man is like, there. I was like, I was like, that looks African, and yes, he looks indigenous. 
like my brain still couldn't make it click like what? Right? So I continued my process and then I was like, well, if you know, if we look at what archaeologists and anthropologists found, yes, the Olmecs are the mother of civilization. And again, when I offend you, forgive me, it's it's, it's not intentional. So I continued learning and I was like, well, after the Olmecs, who was it? The Totonacas, the Chichimecas, Pochteca. I mean, there was like hundreds and literally hundreds of tribes that have passed through time in this land. And I was like, well, if the Olmecs were there, the next group of people is Ekat, the wind, yellow corn, the west. What is west of, of, of like Mexico? Asia. Good. Okay. Somebody knows their cardinal direction. And I was like, okay, I found these artifacts. And, and by the way, all of the artifacts that I will show you, with the exception of a few that come later on, all were found in Mexico, except Easter Island, <laughs> right? And I was like, these figures were carved on stone from stone. So, so whoever got onto the calendar, they had a significant contribution to the area. And I'm going to say positive, but that's not always the case. So, I was like, um, that kind of looks African, but it actually looks more Asian. More Asian. And they say that Polynesian peoples came and they built that. And I was like, wow, how did they get here? The currents. And I was like, and I read a couple of books that, that told about people coming from, from this part of Asia, not through the land bridge, but by boat, and then they landed up here. I learned this again like in 1994, 1993. And I put that, I was at a public uh, library, and I put the book away, I don't even remember the name of the book. But about four years ago, I met this brother from New Zealand, uh, uh, who was a captain one of, the cap one of seven captains from the Polynesian islands that embarked on a circumnavigation of the Pacific with no, with no uh, modern technology. They had sails, and that was it. The boats were made out of like fiberglass, like that was modern, but they had no motors, they had, they had, they had just their wits and the sail. There's a documentary that he said was coming out, and I think it's called Our Blue Canoe. They showed how they went from this region of the Pacific Ocean, across it, landed in Hawaii with, with no charts, no nothing, just the stars. Just the stars and looking at the currents and how the, the, the waves hit the boat, they could tell by the angle which direction was land. Amazing. I, I, would, and I would not have believed it, but this man actually took the trip and I saw a video of it. Right? They went to Hawaii, came through the Pacific, headed towards San Francisco. They had to go around this giant ball of plastic trash the size of Texas that was in the Pacific. Right? And they landed in San Francisco. They went down the coast. They went to the Galapagos, Rarotonga, went back. It took them about a year and a half. This man did this trip, so I know firsthand that this is possible. Right? I was like, my mind was blown, right? Um, but I kind of already knew it. I, I didn't quite have that certainty, but now I do. Here's another Asian figure found in Mesoamerica, in uh, Central America, if you would want to call it. So, Olmex, uh, Asian. And now Kiawitl, the symbol for rain, red corn, symbolizes the south. And what they brought was the codification of laws and just knowledge. This, this is, anybody know who the red corn <coughs> represents? Politically incorrect? Native. Us, right? Like na the native people, indigenous people to this land. And I was like, they came from Aslan. Aslan is, I know it, I know I'm in Aslan, right? Like I'm in like Oregon. Mm -hmm. But it's like north. 
So, cognitive dissonance happening. Here's that slime, right? Right? They migrated. You all know the, the history of the Aztecs. I'm not going to go into detail about how they arrived because I need to get on with the presentation. It's a powerful story. So, these are some of the codification of the laws. And the reason why I use this is because um, this was in my Chicago history class that I took at the university. And the professor said, you know, when he was teaching this, that some of his students said, you know, that's kind of like Islamic, like, rules. And it says, a girl has been put to death for drunkenness, a thief has been executed by stoning, adulterers are shown wrapped together in a sheet and then stoned to death from Codex Mendoza. You can tell by the poor art that this was done by not a native person, but by a European because it's written in Spanish here, right? Um, Sorry for the insult. Uh, um, sorry. I gotta watch myself. Come on. Yeah. Tell me or something, right? To be quiet. So, well, I was giving this presentation one time, and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, Native American sister got up and she was like, you know, that's, that's like not telling the whole truth. When it got to the point where people were put to death, they had to go through a process. 